started, I've asked Ed Whedon to lead us in prayer. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory today, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord, for bringing us into the new year, Lord, safe and secure. We thank you, Lord, for helping us battle the elements of the weather, Lord God. We ask you to touch each member here on the Planning Commission, Lord God, and touch the people in the audience today, Lord. We just ask you to bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father God. We ask you to make the decisions that, that will govern the city, Lord, the, the, in the proper, the proper and correct way. We ask you just to move in this place, Lord, like you never moved before. And those, Lord, going through any kind of elements in the body, Lord, we ask you to heal the body, Lord, and touch them like they've never been touched before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America. and to the republic, republic for which it stands, which it stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you, Ed, and thank you, Commissioner Horsley. Uh, I've asked Commissioner Dave Redman to introduce the members of the Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'll start our introductions uh, on the opposite side of the dais. Uh, that's Ms. Kay Wilson. She is Deputy City Attorney uh, and handles planning matters um, and uh, is charged with keeping us out of trouble. Uh, next to Kay is Mr. Jack Wall. Jack is, uh, is an engineer, and he represents the Rose Hall District. Next to Jack is Ms. Karen beardsley Quasney. She is a college professor and she represents the Princess Anne District. Uh, continuing, Mr. Don Horsley is a farmer uh, and he serves at large. Next to Mr. Horsley is Mr. Ron Ripley. Ron is in the real estate management and development business. Uh, he also serves at, at large, but he um, <clears throat> in actuality shares a Bayside District with me as well. Next to Ron is Ms. Jan Rosinski. She's a property manager. She represents the Centerville District, and she is also the body secretary. Uh, in the center there, center seat, is Mr. Bob Thornton. Bob is our chairman. He is in commercial real estate, and he represents the Lynn Haven District. To Bob's left is Dee Oliver. Dee Oliver is a funeral director. She serves at large, and she is vice chairman of the planning commission. Next to D is Mr. Jeff Hodgson. He is in real estate management, uh, and he represents the Beach District. Uh, next to uh, Jeff is Mr. Mike Inman. Mike is an attorney, uh, a good one at that, uh, and he also serves <laughs> at large. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, David Weiner is in commercial sales. Uh, he's right here to my right, uh, and he represents the Kempsville District. My name's Dave Redmond. Uh, I'm in commercial real estate. I represent the Bayside District. And to my left is Mr. Barry Frankenfield, the planning director, and Barry will introduce his own staff. All right, well, thank Barry. you very much. Uh, to my left is Mr. Ed Whedon. Uh, I don't know what to say about Ed today, but your, your sport coat is better than any mattress jacket I've ever worn in my life. <laughs> so uh, thank you for being here. Uh, on the planning bench, we have Kevin Kemp, our zoning administrator, Marshall Coleman, our planner. Uh, Carolyn Smith, our uh, <coughs> planning administrator, Jimmy McNamara. In the back row, we have Tobias oh. Eisenlauer, uh, Jonathan Sanders, and a Ashby Moss, uh, a brand new employee, I think second day on the job, Cole Fisher, welcome you today. And in the back row, we have Stephen White. So thank you very oh. much for uh, including us today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Redmond, and thank you, Barry. Uh, the next order of business is to address, I'm sorry, the net first order of business is the explanation of the rules. I've asked the Secretary Jan Rosinski to uh, go over the rules with us. Thank you, Chairman Thornton. The Virginia Beach Planning Commission takes pride in being fair and courteous to all parties in attendance. It is important that all understand how the Commission normally conducts its meetings. It's equally important that everyone treat each other's and members of this Commission with respect and civility. The Commission requests that if you have a cell phone to please silence it or turn it off at this time. This is an abbreviated explanation of the rules. A complete set of the rules is located in the front of the Planning Commission agenda for today. Withdrawals and deferrals. The Chairman will ask if there's a request for a withdrawal or deferral of any item on the agenda. Com consideration of these items will be made first. The consent agenda is the second order of business. And that's those items which the Planning Commission believes are unimposed and have favorable staff recommendation. Regular agenda. 
The Planning Commission will then proceed with the remaining items on the agenda. Please note that action taken here today is in the form of a recommendation to the Virginia Beach City Council. The final decision for approval or disapproval of an application is made by City Council. The Commission thanks you for your attendance. We hope that your experience here today leaves you feeling that you've been treated fairly and heard. We thank you. Thank you, Jan. Uh, the next order is to address the items to be withdrawn or deferred. And today we have no items that have been requested for withdrawal or deferral. So we will skip that and go to the next order of business, which are the items that we will place on the consent agenda. And I've asked the vice chair to handle this portion of the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This afternoon, we have six items on the consent agenda. The first matter is item number one, and this is an application of Lucinda, Lucinia Crespo um, for a conditional use permit, a tattoo parlor on property located at 325 First Colonial Road in the Beach District. Is there a representative for this application? Um, if you'll come up, and would you state your name? Please. I'm Luciana Crespo and I'm the applicant. Great. Thank you very much. You can go ahead and take a Thank seat. You. Is there any opposition for this application being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, the chairman has asked Commissioner Hudson to read this into the record. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. The applicant currently operates a massage mm -hmm. center within the business park adjacent to First Colonial Road. A conditional use permit for a tattoo parlor is requested in order to offer permanent cosmetic makeup services known as microblading. Mm -hmm. The proposed hours of operation are from 12 to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. No changes are proposed to the exterior of the building or the existing signage. Uh, in staff's opinion, the proposed conditional use for a tattoo parlor is consistent with the comprehensive plan, land use policies for the Hilltop area, and uh, has recommended that it be uh, approved. The Planning Commission is in agreement. We've placed it on our consent agenda. Thank you. So we have a correction to our items on the consent agenda. Um, we're going to hear one additional one, so we actually have five that are on our consent agenda. So the next matter is agenda item number four. <clears throat> and this is an application of HHVB2 LLC as an applicant and owner for a modification of conditions on property located at 433rd Street in the Beach District. Is there, hi. Hi, Madam <laughs> Vice Chair, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Eddie Berdon, Virginia Beach Attorney representing the applicant, HHVB2 LLC. We appreciate being on the consent agenda. <coughs> All of the recommended conditions in the staff report are acceptable. Great. And we will replace the fence. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, the chairman has asked um, Commissioner Hodgson to read this one into the record. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. On August 14, 1972, City Council granted a conditional use permit on subject property for the development of an eight-unit apartment complex. At the time, the site was zoned R3 residential and had one single-family dwelling on it. The use permit allowed the site to be developed with an additional units, nine in total. The property owner would now like to make alterations to the existing single-family home and the apartment building and thus has requested this modification. Uh, some of the changes that they're looking to do, they're, they're all mostly <coughs> interior renovations to the existing <coughs> apartment building. The total number of units will be reduced from eight units to seven units. A two-story deck will be added to the existing single-family home. The deck will square off the footprint of the home. The existing single-family home will be converted to a duplex. The first floor will be one unit. The second floor will be the second. A majority of the renovations are interior and no substantial changes to the exterior of the building are proposed. Uh, there are also no substantial alterations uh, to the site. The uh, number of dwelling units, which is the important part on the site, will remain the same. No increase in density. Staff recommends approval of this application, and the commission is in agreement and have placed it on our consent agenda. Thank you. The next <coughs> matter is agenda item number five. And this is an application of Franklin Johnston Group Management and Development, LLC, for a conditional change of zoning, B2 community business, to a conditional A24 apartment on property located at 273rd North Witch Duck Road, District 2, in the Kempsville area. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. 
Thank you, Madam Vice Chairman, members of the Commission. Pleasure to be here today. I represent the applicant Franklin Johnson Group. Tony Arnold, I believe, is here today still from the school board for any questions. But we appreciate being placed on consent agenda, Ms. Wheeler. Thank you very much. Uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. And all the conditions and proffers are acceptable. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Is there any opposition to this being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing now, the chairman has asked Commissioner Weiner to read this into the record. Thank you, Mrs. Oliver. This is an application for conditional rezoning B2 community business to conditional A24 apartments. The applicant has proposed 240 unit mixed income on 10.5 acres site with 23 acres per 23 units per acre. There will be six detached buildings, 478 parking places. There will be a, a, a clubhouse, swimming pool, dog park, and tot lot. Vehicular access will be right in, right out only on Woodstuck Road. The applicant will apply for tax credits from the Virginia Housing and Development Authority for 80% of the units. Once Woodstuck Road Phase 2 is complete, which is early 2020, this will be sufficient to handle the estimated 1,596 average daily trips bought on by this development. The property, which is owned by Virginia Beach City Public Schools, was designated for an elementary or middle school. With the declining enrollment of students, Virginia Beach City Public Schools has deemed this excess property. With the help of economic development, they have received an unsolicited bid from a developer for multi-residential unit development. Although apartment buildings were not originally included in the vision of the Western Campus District, we believe this is consistent with the Board of Vision of the Pembroke SGA. So we have put it on the consent agenda. Thank you. The next matter is agenda item number six. <clears throat> and this is an application of Larry Garrison for a conditional use permit for motor vehicle sales on property located at 1805 Virginia Beach Boulevard, Suite 102 in the Beach District. Is there a representative for this application? Hi. If you'll come forward and um, state your name for the record, please. Larry Garrison. And are the conditions acceptable to you? Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Time. Is there any opposition to this being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, the chairman has asked Commissioner Redman to read this into the record. Mr. Chairman, the subject site is developed with a 9,600 square foot building with two units. A laundromat currently operates in the 8,400 square foot suite at the front of the building. This is, a, this is a request to operate a motor vehicle sales operation within the 1,200 square foot unit in the rear of the building. The applicant has rented space on the adjacent site for a car dealership for the past 15 years. That site is being sold and the applicant is in the process of relocating. The applicant proposes to use the subject site for the display of up to 10 vehicles, primarily sold via the internet and office space for the small dealership. No changes to the building are proposed other than a single wall-mounted wall sign above the entryway into the office. Uh, staff is in uh, full support of this application. We are unaware of any opposition and the Planning Commission consents. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Redman. The next matter is agenda item number seven, and this is an application of Lynn Haven Mall LLC as applicant and owner for a major entertainment venue signage permit on property located at 701, 739, 745, 757, and 773 Lynn Haven Parkway, 1001, 1005, 1009 Lynn Haven Mall Loop in the Rose Hall District. Is there a representative for this application? Good afternoon, Grady Palmer for the, uh, for the applicant. We appreciate staff's recommendation and be placing this on the consent agenda. We agree with the stipulations and conditions. Great, thank, thank you. you. Is there any opposition to this being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, the chairman has asked Commissioner Wall to read this into the record. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. <clears throat> uh, this application is for a major retail venue signage permit. <clears throat> Uh, last night, January 9th, City Council approved an amendment to the zoning ordinance that created a definition for a major retail venue. According to the ordinance, a major retail venue is a zoning lot containing at least 4 million square feet and its primary use is providing retail and indoor recreation services. The ordinance stipulates that the signage package for a major retail venue <coughs> is subject to Section 218 of the zoning ordinance, allowing City Council to consider and approve signage for these venues. <clears throat> Lynn Haven Mall is currently implementing 
a new and updated branding strategy. As part of this effort, they wish to replace the existing freestanding sign on the site. Freestanding signs. Many of the signs uh, interior to the Lynn Haven Mall Loop Road have already been replaced. The freestanding signs at the major entrances to the mall property are located on the other side of the Lynn Haven Mall Loop Road and therefore are off-site to the principal use and needs city council approval to replace, enlarge, or move. Uh, this request um, is to replace these freestanding signs. They're in line. <clears throat> um, this request is to uh, replace these freestanding signs that are in line with the mall's rebranding effort. Um, the conditions are acceptable to the applicant and uh, staff recommends approval. Therefore, we have placed this item on the consent agenda. Thank you, Commissioner Wall. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, that was the last item on the consent agenda. <coughs> I would like to move that we approve consent agenda items number one, four, five, six, seven to be approved. I have a motion by Vice Chairman Oliver. Do you have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hodson. Uh, we're now ready to vote. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. He, uh, item four was one of the... Item four. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, item four lists the uh, town bank as, as a lender, and I wish to disclose that I'm a member of the town bank advisory board in Chesapeake. And the letter on file with the clerk so stating, and further that the, the bank is not the applicant. I'm disclosing that since we are just recommending to council, we don't make the final decision, uh, and I have no interest in this property, that I'll, I'll be voting on the application. Okay, Mr. and Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. For the same reason as Mr. Ripley, uh, serve on the town bank advisory board for Virginia Beach, and for the same reason I will, uh, I, I will be voting, but uh, disclosing my position. Yeah. I see any other hands? Same item like four? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on item number five, uh, Ed, I will have to uh, res restrain from voting because my company is involved in that uh, okay. project. Votes open. Are, are, you, are you abstaining from all of them? No, just that, just that one. It just shows that you're staying from anything. So okay. I'll, make, I'll make a notation. I, 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 sorry, I got the right. The light's not working again. No. Just by, a vote, by a vote of 11 to 0, the commission has approved items 1, 4, 5, 6, and 7 for consent with the um, notation for abstention on items number 4 and number 5. Thank you. The next order of business, we will address the remaining two matters on the agenda, and I'd like to ask the secretary to call the first item. Okay, the first item is consumer properties, an application for consumer properties for a subdivision variance, section 4.4B of the subdivision regulation on property located at 2311 Busby Lane, District 6 Beach. Are you the applicant? I am not the applicant. My name is Phil Bonifant. I'm the Senate Land Surveyor, and I've indicated to the owner and developer that I would be here to represent them today. Okay. Can you explain the project to us, please? Uh, <clears throat> the property was deeded from the original owner of lot of parcel D. Uh, Fifty feet of that lot was deeded in 1949 to <clears throat> the original owner of this particular parcel, the 50 by 145 foot <coughs> deep property. Bless you. He kept it as a pocket deed. Excuse me, sir. Can you talk more into the microphone? I can barely hear you. I'm sorry. There you go. Thank he, you. He, he kept it as a pocket deed for 12 or 13 years before it was recorded. In that time, they built a house on the property and were living in it. And about 1964 or 63, it was recorded. At that time, the city incorporated, and then we had zoning laws that kept people from subdividing by deed. Um, what we are trying to do now is take down the house that is there and build a new house. The one that is there is <clears throat> a 1950s version, two bedroom, one bathroom, small kitchen, <coughs> living dining room with a deck on the front, and I suspect that the termite, termites have had it at their leisure for the past several years. Um, the house that's going in will be two-story two uh, contemporary vinyl. 
Um, I think it was, you know, pretty much like the one that's shown right there. The footprint print will be almost identical with what was there so that we have <coughs> a very little amount of surface drainage going into the CBPA or the, the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Um, I think that's essentially what we're trying to do is put something <coughs> back that will upgrade the neighborhood a bit from what it looks like at the present time. Uh, any questions of Mr. Bonner? Uh, stand by. We might have some for you later. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, we do have um, someone that's in opposition, uh, Anthony Alberts Albertson. <coughs> You can state your name for the record, please. Anthony Albritton, Sr. And can you um, tell us what your opposition is? Yes, I was talking to the gentleman earlier about uh, this piece of property. I requested that they put a fence up between my property and their property, even though I, he told me I have a fence there. Certainly I have a fence there, but I, I would rather for them to put a fence up, too, because they might not like my fence. And when they come and build a brand new house in that area, it'll create a problem. But also in that same area, the Chesapeake Bay, it's a, it's a ditch that run behind this property and the Chesapeake Bay water runs back there. I was told I couldn't even cut a limb or a tree down in my yard because of that zoning, okay? Now they're gonna build a brand new house there. And I was also told, I couldn't even repair my shed. I have a shed in my yard and uh, wasn't allowed to mm -hmm. repair my shed. But yet, somebody could buy the property next door and come and build a brand new house. Yes, I have a problem, a big problem with that. Uh, the, uh, what's the name of the Armor Corps engineers came out one time and told me that they can charge me $10,000 for uh, about that area, that zone, it's a, it's a lot of zoning issues, and I think y'all need to check it out to see the different, uh, so I don't have the paperwork with me, but all the different zoning areas uh, that come across that property and come across my property. But I talked to the gentleman, I said, hey, put a fence up, my opposition will go away. But, uh, but he told me it's not his money to spend, but What's a fence between my property and the property, you know, that the terror. You know, I've been owning a property on, on Busker Lane for years, and I wouldn't allow it even to repair my shed. A tree fell and knocked the hole through my shed, and I wanted to repair my shed. I was told I couldn't even repair my shed. But now the brand new house coming up, you know, I think something's wrong with that. I think, I think you need to look into the area and see where that line, there's some lines that come across certain areas of the property and my property, because the Chesapeake <clears throat> Bay is behind our, our property and it run out to the ocean. And when Mr. Dehart on the front, where a food line, not food line, where uh, the Asian store, all that, it was pipe put down and it runs through the neighborhood and run out behind that property. So I think y'all need it investigate a little more about that area and look at all the different zonings that are uh, stipulations that's in that area because I was bombarded with a lot of stipulations and they showed me all kinds of lines that were our property run so I think it need to be checked out a little more thank you I have a just a question for, yes, for uh, Barry if you have some issues about repairing a building and things about instead of saying to us that somebody told you you could or couldn't do it to see, see Mr. Uh, Frankenfield Absolutely. after the meeting because it sounds unusual be glad yeah to you, sh you should have the ability to mm -hmm. fix your shed up and do things like that and he's he's the guy that can help you all right I will. okay well, how's the neighborhood mm -hmm. Okay. Any yes. any questions of the speaker? Yes. Thank you, sir. All right. I've got one. Oh, D? Do you mind um, showing us where your property is? Next is it door, to the right? To th to the right of that, or the same side to the right of. Okay. The Cuffers used to own that property. Within my family, 
and it's next door. I own the property next door. You're between okay, so you're, you're on, on the, the corner? corner. No, no next side. door to the right. Other and side. Okay. If you come on Busky Lane from Old Great Neck Road, mm -hmm. you make a left on Busky. That's the first house mm -hmm. on Busky. My house is the second house mm -hmm. to the right of that property. Okay. Thank you. Any other speakers? There are no other speakers for this application. Okay, Phil, would you like a minute for rebuttal? I don't have a card. Not at all. So you need, you need to go to the mic, Phil. Could we go to the survey and I'll point out some things on that? Did we get a new pointer yet? Uh, pointers, pointers. Huh? It's history. Uh, it's history. No. It's on my list. I got one. <laughs> Here, I have one. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever used oh, it. Oh, this is easy. Don't it's look a into it. It's a top yeah. button. <laughs> we have one don't over here. Don't shine it back at us. Yeah. <laughs> it's a top button. <laughs> are, you hold, are you holding up the pointer? <laughs> okay. I give it to Amanda. That's a technical wizard. <laughs> wow, that's pretty slick. And it's. <laughs> <laughs> don't point it at you. Don't point <laughs> it back at us. All right. Uh, it doesn't show very clearly along here, but right about. From, from here going this way, diagonally from the upper left to the lower right is where the line for the RPA, RMA changes from resort, uh, res, um, the protection area to the management area of the Chesapeake Bay. And so I can under, oop, I can understand why, why Mr. Albertson's property <clears throat> is, um, He's having trouble with the with the CBPA people. Pull it up just a little bit, please, uh, Jimmy. There it is. All right, mm -hmm. yeah, you'll see here, here's the line where anything below that line is in the um. RPA, resource protection, and anything above it is resource management, if I'm saying that. Yeah, resource management. They all drain into the Chesapeake Bay watershed. His is significantly um, impacted because it looks to be at least three quarters of his property is in the RPA. So he would have to jump through several more hoops than, than my client who is in the RMA. Um, and the further south he goes, um, like he was saying, the Corps of Engineers had indicated to him that he was going to have some problems. That's probably because they indicated that there was forested wetlands in that very south corner of his property. Um, the property of my client does not have that problem. That's that. Now, there is a, a six-foot fence and a chain-link fence okay. along along this property line between my client and Mr. Albertson's at 2315 Busky Lane. And just on the s southwest side of that fence is a hedge that would take more than just a little pushing to get through. It is, you, you can't see through it. On, on the south, on the north side of the fence, trying to see into Mr. Buskey's property is, is impossible. There's, there's no view unless you're up 15 feet or better up over top of the, the hedge and fence that's there. And so for us to put in another fence along that line would, would seem, or for, to be required to put in a fence along that line would seem to be overkill for what's already there. And I don't see from the property at 2315 that there have been any improvements or anything to upgrade the property in the past several years. So we're, we're, I'm thinking that for him to request us to put in a fence there is, is a bit, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it's productive for what's already there. Any questions of uh, Phil? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, with with if there are no further questions of the speakers, we can close the public hearing and talk about it amongst ourselves. And uh, somebody would at some point make a motion. Uh, we can <clears throat> move on with it. Jeff, this is your neighborhood. What are your thoughts? Well, first thing, sometimes when we have applications like that, and you know, as the uh, the speaker came up with some some concerns he had, especially with his own property and his shed. It's nice that they're brought to light and hopefully when he leaves here today, Barry will have some answers for him as to why he couldn't fix a simple hole in his shed roof. So, I mean, hopefully there's some good that comes out of this, but I think this, I don't have any issues with this application 
at all, uh, especially here in that there's a, a pretty large uh, vegetation buffer between the two properties. And you said there's already a fence there now, or two, two fences, I believe. It, I can see, yeah. Mr. Albertson's fence starts about the property line is right near the pro, uh, the power pole, just a little bit to the left of it. Um, going back toward the fence, the fence begins at about uh, the front of the house. Okay. And so you've got a little bit of lower right there where there is just a little bit, but once you go past that, you're getting into some some fence and okay. some hedge. Thank you. So I, I, I'm willing if anybody else has any comments to make a motion to approve the application as it stands. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I hope that, uh, Barry, you can address some of those questions that the, uh, the other speaker had. I'll Thank you. We have a motion, we have a second. Are there any other mm -hmm. questions before we call for the vote? Everybody okay? Who seconded it? I'm sorry. Uh, David, uh, Commissioner Weiner. Votes open. By a, vote, by a vote of 11 to 0, the Commission has approved the application of Consumer Product Properties LLC. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, next call the next. Hey, the next item on the agenda is item number three Michael uh, Benetti, an application for a subdivision variance, section 4.4B and D <clears throat> of the subdivision regulation on property located on the west side of Riddick Lane, approximately. 1,379 feet from Indian River Road, District 7, Princess Anne. I know, it's, I've been drinking it. It's, it's going. Uh, is the applicant here? Yes. Yeah. You can state your name for the record and then it, um, give us a rundown of your application, please. Yeah, it's uh, Michael David Benetti. Um, thank you for hearing what we are proposing to do. Uh, these lots, um, were originally, I think, recorded early in the 50s. Um, and there was, uh, I actually own a house and previously built um, a house 10 years ago that is uh, two lots south of, of the uh, Blue Dashed area. Um, and that's where I currently live now. So I've purchased the property that is the furthest north um, and uh, you know, we, we have the um, plans to go forward and build a house on that, you know, so what we're running into is it's, it's extremely hard to design a house, a ranch, a whatever, with only 60 foot of frontage. Um, these lots were, they're all 100 feet across by several hundred feet deep, six, 700 feet deep. They're approximately 1.5 acres a piece. And like I said, there's, um, there's five of them, as you can see. On both sides of the, the lot group are retention ponds for the courthouse estates um, and the neighborhoods that surround. So um, what we are asking to do is just simply divide uh, the, the property so that it would be more buildable, um, a more friendly lot for, for a single family. Um, dwelling and uh, we would in order to get to the back lot we would simply have uh, you know the driveway um, it's not drawn in there there it is the driveway would would um, get the the ingress and egress for the back lot um, and it is you know at this point proposed to be in its location that it's that it says right now um, so that, you know, the, the impact is really, I don't think that there is a whole lot of change right now. The, the, the lot, both of these lots, um, are heavily wooded. So there's going to be, um, you know, for, for both lots, whether they are, um, as, as it is proposed or whether they are as they are now, um, you know, the, all the trees are going to, there are several trees are going to have to come down. We're going to have to do um, pump station into the, the manhole as I have right now. Um, so there's not a whole lot that I feel would, would change. Um, and we're just 
simply doing this to to be able to entertain the, the you know a, a more buildable house um, w with less limitations on on the setbacks, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. Um, the the owner that is in the middle, um, he's not here, but he's uh, you know obviously filled out the application with me, so we're both kind of going in, submitting this, and asking for, for the permission to, to subdivide it, at, as you see now. Any questions of Mr. Bonetti? Uh, <coughs> Can you give me a sense of where on, I believe that it's on lot I-1, the house might be positioned? Um, I mean, it's a heavily wooded lot, and I know heavily, the trees yeah. are going to come down. I'm just trying to get a sense of... I, mean, I say it would be right in the middle. Okay, that's what I, that's what I was imagining. And yeah. that you, that, are you planning to maintain some of that buffer vegetation between that lot and those those houses behind you? Well, or are you clearing the lot in its the courthouse estates on the mm -hmm. angled part? Yeah. Yeah, there is a, uh, a ten or a fifteen foot uh, concrete culvert right. drainage easement mm -hmm. that connects these two bodies of water, mm -hmm. um, which does have. Uh, it's it like goes down, but yeah, the um, it, it's it would be pretty. There's a lot of vegetation. I mean, it's all woods. Mm -hmm. So, the the trees that are along the back would would stay. I mean, they're like a, a pine tree that I mm -hmm. think just kind of happened when they developed Courthouse mm -hmm. Estate. So now we've got a nice little pine tree buffer around this whole area. Mm -hmm. um, and and my intent is to leave as many trees as we. I mean, that's what both both uh, lot owners are wanting is mm. to keep keep the trees and keep the natural uh, area natural then. yeah exactly so okay uh, I would I would call to your attention if you look on page seven of the application at the back end of this property up against these houses there is not only a 15 foot drainage easement mm -hmm. there's a there's a 35 foot drainage easement and a 15 foot maintenance easement so there's 50 feet back there that he can't get anywhere right. near mm -hmm. and so and then he's got a, a rear yard setback to honor mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. seems like there's adequate back there any any other questions of mr bonetti thank you we may ask you back there's some opposition okay. here so thank we you. may call you back okay we do have one speaker in opposition and that's amanda kunz If you can please state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Amanda Kutz, and I live in the property on in Courthouse Estates that abuts uh, these lots. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all this afternoon and for having your uh, hearing on a day that school is closed so my six-year-old can get a civics lesson hey. um, and see mom and go to work, right? Um, there we go. So we oppose this uh, subdivision variance for a variety of reasons, of which I gave you all a, a detailed memo explaining. Um, first of all, we do not believe that the subdivision variance meets the requirements of city regulations to grant a subdivision variance. Um, and I won't go through each of the five conditions because I did provide you a very detailed memo, but I would point out that it is required to get a subdivision variance that strict application of the division rules would um, produce a hardship. And it also requires that the commission not take into account uh, personal preference. Um, for Mr. Bonetti, there is no hardship um, if this variance is denied. There are existing right now two lots. He proposes to build two houses. There's no reason he can't build two houses on the two existing lots as is. Um, it's a personal preference for him that he would like to build a house that is too large to be accommodated on the lots that are existing. If he were to grant this uh, subdivision variance, um, and this large home was built, it would be completely out of character with all of the surrounding homes on Riddick Lane, as well as in Courthouse Estates and Signature at West Neck that abuts this property. Um, in addition, it, um, the orientation is different than every other lot on Riddick Lane, as well as the lots behind it on Courthouse Estates. So it, it would create a very incohesive um, part of the property and for all of the surrounding property owners. So that's a hardship for us. In addition um, to that, there are many areas within a stone's throw of this property that could accommodate a home of the size Mr. Bernetti would like to propose at Indian River Plantation, King's Grant, um, 
all of those eagles nests those are literally right around the corner from this and finally as a homeowner um, we are concerned that the rural characteristic of the property um, is not going to be maintained we bought the house for that nature we're also very concerned of stormwater i don't have to tell you we live in an area where that's a, flooding is a huge concern this is a buffer for those neighborhoods um, and so finally i'd just like to say if you're going to prove this variance which we hope you do not um, that you should require at least a 50-foot buffer of trees from every property line um, which would be in addition to the setback requirements thank you any questions of Mr. Boots? Thank you. I don't know, but uh, Jack and excuse me, where, where do you you just live in courthouse estates, and it doesn't really show up there. Yeah, you just it's live kind of just um, hard to see if you zoom if you zoom in. My house is the um, right where it says PDH one. Mm -hmm. That is my house, um, kind of right there above that star. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Uh, Don uh, first, and then David. And you, what you're asking for is a 50-foot buffer all the way around this property? Um, yeah, where it is it adjacent to homeowners, yes. And that, he had mentioned in, a, he, in addition to the what's already there? Mm-hmm, yes. Don't, you don't think that's kind of excessive? I mean, I think the request is excessive. I think it's excessive to ask to build a house that doesn't accommodate a lot when you could build a house of that size in developments that the city's already approved. Okay, thank you. Uh, David Weiner. Can you actually see the houses on Riddick Lane through the woods? I can see Mr. Benetti's. In fact, his dog has been in my yard several times. Um, we can see his house, yes. I mean, I mean we have a good buffer of trees, right. so I can't, I mean, I can't see into his bedroom window, but I can certainly see his house from my house. I mean, what you're going to get on two long, narrow pieces of property or two houses that aren't going to look like anything on Riddick Lane now anyway. So if the if it was re, the rezoned, you're going to get two nicer looking houses than you would want two narrow, long, skinny houses. Well, we would presume that if they built two houses on Riddick Lane without the lots reconfigured, they probably would not be building them right against mm. my backyard. They could. Yeah, I mean it's they could. It, they could. That would be a long way to run a sewer line to to Riddick to Riddick Lane. Other questions? Thank you. Is that our last? There are no other speakers. <clears throat> Mr. Benetti, you have an opportunity for rebuttal if you wish. A question. I don't know if I really understood exactly what, which house is hers. Um, what was your name again? What was your name again? Um, Amanda Kutz, my husband, Kutz. Matthew, Levy, and I live on Barbara Drive. Okay, Mrs. Mrs. Kutz, uh, and, and it's PDH1 right there? That's the house? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, f I mean, first and foremost, the reason why I'm doing this personally is because I couldn't afford a lot in any river plantations. Um, honestly, the house that um, we are planning on, on designing <coughs> is all dependent on what we can do at this at this hearing today um so it can either go one way on a hundred foot lot 60 foot the frontage which is the typical house whether it's in strawbridge or any river plantations typical frontage is going to be at least 70 to 80 feet on any house um what it also does is that it if if you do build a 60 foot house on a 100 foot wide lot you're going to have to have a driveway or entrances mm -hmm. pinned up against the sides of either of you know either side so I, I think that that actually forces you to take out more trees and and decrease the amount of buffer between um, the neighborhood so what we're planning on doing like we said is putting the houses in the middle of these two square larger lots and um, and and the other big thing and i don't know you know it, we're, we're planning on keeping the trees keeping the vegetation um i know exactly the the area um that that she's saying and when it's summertime i have a very hard time even seeing the house lights um when they're lit up at night so now that it's winter and all the trees are gone you can see the different houses here and there but it's still actually pretty pretty private and I think the the you know I'm 
um, the, these woods have been back there and everyone has been looking at them for, you know, and there's dilapidated houses on Riddick Lane that, that really need to come down. Um, so the house that I took down was completely torn apart and needed to come down and I built my new house. This, this new um, area, there are no houses. And so it's the only section of woods or forest that are, is, um, is left in Riddick Lane. And I think obviously there's gonna be some opposition because it, it, it's a pretty place. But, um, but the, the, the reason um, are for us to ask for the lot to be more or less kind of redesigned so that it was um, a more buildable lot that I think that that's really going to have the, the structure more away from um, your house or any surrounding areas, to be honest with you. Um, if, it, if it was the old way, you can see how far back my house is. Um, so I have, and that, you know, it could, it could have been all the way in the front or it could have been all the way in the back, but we chose to go the back, so I had to take out a lot of trees. Um, you know, in the front yard. So that is what we were trying to avoid is just coming in and plowing a whole bunch of trees down. Uh, your, your red light's going, so I need to ask you to uh, end your comment. Any, I, I, see, I see some hands, so we'll, we'll get to some questions. Ron? Uh, there, you own the lot. The, who owns a lot in between where you live and where this, these two lots that you're asking to? It's a, it's a new owner. Um, it's a 2,500 square foot house um just ha just has been rehabbed and they have handicap ramps around it but the uh, new family has just moved in over the last week so somebody else owns that somebody else owns that yes it's That's using correct. it as single family um yes okay and they actually were trying to about to the north of you what's to that, the what's that use that is the dilapidated house um where are we so to the north of the property that you're asking the pdh1 i think it's that's a big pond surrounded by pine trees <clears throat> that's part of courthouse isn't it is it part of court mm -hmm. yeah it's the and the and there's even a bigger lake or pond on the south side of all of this that you can't see but um you can see the tip of it yeah okay uh other questions <clears throat> anybody have another question yeah, jack, jack there's a red so would you be willing to agree to a like just some like to maintaining a buffer i mean i know it's you know in, not all the way around not all the way around but to the existing homes on oh yeah Barbara. yeah we don't i mean we want just as much disconnection from four houses i mean sorry about my dog it is a very annoying dog but um I will try, but, you know, but we want to maintain that. And and I have three kids mm -hmm. that just recently we've caught them, you know, with the ice playing back in that, in it, in it got Sparta, you know. So we don't want our kids back there, you know. And we don't want them near the ponds or anything like that. And so, um, you know, yes, I will maintain whatever kind of buffer. But the, just to let you know, there is a buffer there right now just from the natural, I think, development. And that they're just pine trees. Yeah. But they're kind of like everything that goes around these two ponds and then down around that um, retention connection thing mm -hmm. is, is smaller pine trees. But. So even up to just maintaining a 50-foot, say, mm -hmm. you wouldn't clear it yeah. and maintain it? Excuse me. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, well, let him, let him answer okay. uh, Jack's question and then Okay. I'll, I'm just, I'll it's just a general, it's not a hard, it's just a... Um, uh, well, I guess it would be what we're asking for are these two lots to be coming from 100 by 700 and going to a 200 by 350. Um, so if we gave up 50 foot of a dedicated... It wouldn't necessarily be dedicated, it would just be... Buffer. Buffer. When you, when you clear, you just you plan to... I mean, if there was any way to tell what the scale was between the, the back lot uh, or where the proposed house is going to be, I mean, 50 feet doesn't sound like it, like it's hard to entertain. I just can't tell by looking at how much that's going to encroach on that back lot. Um, and, and just so you know, Mrs. Uh, Cutts, um, 
I, the bigger house is going to be on the front lot. The, well, that's what we're hoping for. The, the back one is where we drew the big house for this variance. And to be honest with you, just over the last like month since me and, and the other property owner have been talking about his needs and my needs, we've actually decided to swap them. And I don't, this doesn't, I mean, the line would still be where it is, but the other house that's going to go on the back is going to be closer to like 2,800 square feet. What happened there? Just. Jimmy did that. And there won't be a pool on that one. Who did the that? pool is going to. Uh, one second. Uh, Dave Redmond. Can, Sorry. Uh, the answer should be no, because I'm certainly not going to agree to that. I think a 50 foot buffer is completely unreasonable. Yeah. You know, we have legally prescribed setbacks for these sorts of things, and, 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 uh, I wouldn't agree to it. Um, I'm not going to agree to to that anyway. So I mean, yeah, that's I, a good I, idea. I just think that's just I just think that's going too far, 50 feet. So um, I mean, we have we have things in the ordinance about that. Uh, anyone else care to add a comment, Mr. Enman? Mr. Enman. Uh, I was going to suggest that there's a 35 foot buffer on uh, the property that they own backs up to you. Uh, perhaps a 35 foot buffer on yours would be acceptable. To you. Can you just go back to the to the diagram that shows the hmm? easements? No, it says 35. Yeah, it's 15 it's of it's maintenance and 35 of drainage. Yeah, I'm talking about 35. I wish I had pictures. I mean, there's a there's a good amount of distance between these houses, between courthouse and Reddick. Um, a very good distance. But I mean, the the. I guess I could agree to something, but yeah. I'm kind of, now that I'm hearing what you, on, let's, 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 let Ms. Oliver yes, no, make a comment. I got to make a comment. I think that given the size of the lot, what do we, what, what do, when you square them off, what do we have, an acre and a half on each? Yes, ma'am. I think that between the drainage and the 35 foot buffer that's already there on the neighbors and then the natural easement that he has is plenty it's a wooded lot. I think we're asking him to do something that he, you don't need to do. I, I think there's plenty of buffer here. There's plenty of woods. I'm sure he's not going to turf the entire acre and a half. No, um, I mean, we're, and I'm most sure of our attention is actually to the British lane and itself. I, and I think that um, there'll probably be a fence up, <clears throat> dogs, things like that. Kids, you're trying to contain them. I, I think that's just asking a lot. Um, I think you, I think there's probably there's plenty of woods back there. If if you don't have any more to add to your comments, we'll close the public hearing, and we'll bring this matter to a vote real quick, like. Okay. Uh, no, I mean my only other I, comment. I don't is want to that cut you short. Trying to just improve that area. I think we hear you loud and clear. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to close the public hearing, and then I'd bring questions forward, Don. I've just got a comment to make. I, th I think really reconfiguration of these two lots is a better situation to develop than the long, skinny lots are better to farm, but short, <laughs> short lots are better to build houses on. So that's just, that's just <laughs> the way it is. And, um, but if, if I was going to farm it, I'd rather, I prefer the long, skinny fields, you know. But, but uh, I, th I think that what, what he's asking for is, is very, is all right. I don't. Have, I don't have a problem with it. I think with the, with the 35 foot drainage easement and that big concrete ditch, I'm very familiar with that big concrete drainage that way because I farmed the other side on the other side the, the field over there, and I see it. We farm right beside it. It's a huge ditch and it's, and it's got a concrete bottom in it, and uh, so I think what he's asking for is 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 okay. And whenever you're ready, I'm ready to make a motion. Uh, David Weiner. I'm sorry, David Redmond. Uh, I move approval of the application. Uh, second. Second by Mr. Horse, that we're ready to vote. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, same disclosure I had on the previous application. Apparently, this the applicant has listed his town bank as a lender, and again, I will be sure. voting. I have no interest. Right. Two Ryan's conflicts, but no, no. Okay. Ryan, you still going to vote? Yes. Okay. We ready? Ready to vote. Votes open. <laughs> I vote 11 to 0. Commissioners put the application of Michael Benetti. Thank you. Is there any further business that anyone would like to bring to my attention? If not, 
Uh, on behalf of my fellow commissioners, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today and thank the planning director and his staff for their excellent work in preparing today's agenda. Excellent. Meeting adjourned.